Hey everybody, Charlie here. Welcome back to Gunsmith, you guys. We're at $4.7 million, and, uh, well, I don't want to fill this order because I want my trust with the United States to go up a little bit. We're filling orders pretty well. We're making lots of bullets now. There's a couple of inefficiencies here, though, I'd like to take care of. The first has to do with uh, gun cotton production. It was a little bit slow, right? Just with this little bit here, it's a little bit slow. So I went ahead, I went ahead and I made this. And this is basically an extra gun, uh, sorry, I made an extra gun cotton uh, production set here. Uh, and then uh, I figured, well, you know, it's also not quite keeping up on the raw chemicals now. So I then made another one of these. But of course, if you make another one of these, the gun cotton thing is not gonna be. So I made another one of these then. So now we're left with basically a situation where we get output happening pretty much the same time we get the new input. And that ha that's happening consistently on every machine now for that, which is kind of nice. It's happening kind of the same thing over here. And we have a nice mix now of chemical production and gun cotton being used for those chemicals. So the ratio for this seems to be two of these uh, designs for every three of these designs. So there's one and one there, and then two and two, and then a third one here. So basically, just keep, if you, if you wanted to do the same thing for yourself, I guess, uh, this here is uh, do this twice, and then do this right here uh, three times, and then you're good. Uh, the other bottleneck, which we're gonna actually address now, because I haven't done it yet, is heating and cooling. So this heating and cooling system works pretty well, but it's also a little bit slow. We end up building up an extra supply of extruded bullets. I'd like to fix that because down the line here, this machine is actually not, like, the, look at this, craft speed is two seconds, right? And this one here is three seconds output. And we wanna catch up with this, of course. So what I'd like to do is get all these bullets out of these dispensers and get them into the formers because coming over here, if you take a look at the formers, uh, these things are actually not keeping up either. So I might want to have some more of these too. Basically just scaling the production of bullets up, like just dramatically making way, way more bullets is what I want to do. Uh, do this and we're over $5 million now. Hopefully reputation is good. Let's see, 238 out of 240. Okay, so just lit, like, like two more orders. Uh, so what I want to do for this is I want to add two more dispensers on each side of this entire thing. So two more for this, two more for this, and two more for this. We can also do two more here, two more here, two more here. And that will give us formed bullets faster, which means that these will start filling up even more. But we have space over here to put uh, six more of these uh, machines. I think we have space for six more. It might be kind of tight, but that would fill up the entire uh, the entire place. So that's what I'd like to do now. So we'll start over here, since there's space for it. I'm going to get this guy. This is the marketer, so we can actually move him kind of wherever we want. And I'm just going to stick him over here because he doesn't really need to be anywhere specific. I might, I might move him over. You know what? Let's move him over here. It's fine. We'll move him over here instead. All right. So for this, this is pretty easy. We've got 22 here and 50 caliber here, 762 here, and 556. So all I want to do, I think here, is just add another two dispensers on each side of this. Like so. There's space to repair on this side and this side, and that is replicated everywhere. So there's always space to repair these. Then I need to have belts, of course, running this direction so that they can all be... Uh, dispensing what they're supposed to be. And then we need to match these up. So 762 is here. We'll have this being, uh, sorry, 762 extruded is here. We're going to want 762 extruded coming out the side like that. Uh, you are 50 caliber extruded, so we'll get the same thing for you uh, here. There's a thousand of them in storage. Like, we could be making a lot more bullets, you know? Uh, we have this happening. This is 22. So we'll get 22 extruded here. And then you are 556. And we'll get 556 extruded here. Okay. Need to match these up to another machine. Now, we're adding two more dispensers per bullet type. Uh, wait, no. Yes. Yes, per bullet type. Which means 12 new dispensers. Because of that, 
I'm just going to have a new station for this. I think it's easier just to do that. So we'll come down. We'll add a new station. I'm just going to put it right here. And you are going to be responsible for all of these new dispensers. So we're going to turn this on now. And we should see the bullets all coming out two by two now. Which is going to just increase everything that's happening over here pretty well. Uh, let me double check and see if we're getting repairs on this stuff. Okay, you can repair this. You can repair this though too, right? Because I haven't done any manual repairs in this entire place yet. Uh, since the last video, I'm letting it run. And so far, nothing seems to have a problem. Yeah, you're getting that. Good. Okay. Uh, I have moved something though. I moved these machines over just a tad. Because they they weren't quite getting repaired on this side. This machine couldn't quite get repaired with that for some reason. So uh, I moved this over, which creates space here for both of them to get repaired. Uh, and the same thing is happening here. Okay, so we want more dispensers on this stuff too. Don't know if there's enough room for that here. This is my worry on this one. Uh, you are going to move... And I'm going to have you shift yourself down over to here. And then I might have to shut this down. This is 45. The good thing about this, though, is that we've got an access of bullets in these dispensers. So we can keep producing, right, uh, while we move this stuff. Uh, I'm going to move this bench kind of over here, let's say. And then I can have a dispenser here. But I kind of think and I want to move this to be more like... See, that will fit, but this creates a bit of a tight area here. It's a little bit tight. Uh, actually, I can shift this over. That actually is okay, aside from... No, I think they can repair it on both sides of this. I think that's going to be fine. We'll slide these over. That's going to be fine. So this is 45. Uh, we can turn this back on. This is 45. 45 extruded. There. And then you are going to be the 9mm, right? Yep. 9mm extruded. Right here. Okay. Let's have, let's have these new machines added to you. Uh, we need the belts to go with it. So there we go. And then we'll go ahead and just turn these on. And now we should have more bullets being made. We want to time this so it doesn't bump into it. I, I don't think it super matters, but I'm going to do it anyway. I just, I just don't want them to bump into each other like that. I want it to be a bit more clean. Yeah, that's good. They're not coming out exactly the same time either, which is actually kind of cool. Okay, so that takes care of... I'll, I'll repair this. It's fine. I'll repair this one, too. Why not? So that takes care of the, like, doubling up the dispensing of the extruded bullets. And now we have it go going in storage, right? We have this thing starting to store more now, right? And so now we get to the point where it's almost like, hey, you kind of need a splitter and have more of these machines now. And, like, I don't know. Like, one, right is going to dispense too quickly for this. So it's mostly about output speed. If we're dispensing two per three seconds, we need to be able to process two per three seconds. And since this is crafting speed two seconds, it's crafting them faster than one is dispensing, but slower than two are dispensing. So if we added... Um, I guess we would have to add a three-way on this, is what it looks like. The heating would need a three-way splitter on each of these. Because this is two every three seconds. That means, well, it's one every, that means one every one and a half seconds, I guess. So we'd need to get to four and a half seconds of production, which is not possible. <laughs> I don't know, whatever, whatever doesn't matter whatever um i just want to use the extra extruded so if i can see the extruded starting to go down in supply then i know we're we're catching up good because 
once this drops, there's no point to having two of these, right? But it looks like it's remaining constant now. It might actually be dropping slightly, which is okay. That's kind of what I want. I want to get that stuff processed. The problem, though, is that it's going to be in here and... Like, I feel like I should be splitting this at least into two each. Because that would put it to four seconds per. And uh, right now we have uh, three. Well, yeah, we have three seconds per. Two. No, two every three seconds is one and a half seconds. So we're dispensing at one and a half seconds. We're crafting at two seconds. So we're going to be dispensing faster than we're crafting. Having this go outwards. Uh, would put us to crafting in one second and dispensing in one and a half seconds. It would put us behind again, but at least we're producing faster. So it needs a two-way splitter on each of these. Interesting. Uh, we actually have more room for that over here. So it might have been better to do it over here. But then I'm not going to have the room for this. So I'm going to let this go. I'm just going to leave it alone and say, screw it. As long as I'm making more bullets, I will be okay, okay? Because look at the bottlenecks. They're kind of disappearing now. We're making enough bullets to where we could just keep filling orders. Uh, I also want to get combat boots going. Uh, just because some of these orders, they're not very high value, though. So usually I just cancel them. But sometimes we'll get, like, uh, a good pistol order, and they also want boots. And it's like, I can't sell those pistols now. But, like, we have enough orders to replace them. Like, there's a scroll bar that just keeps going for these orders. So it's, it's not that big of a deal, I don't think, to just dismiss orders. And plus, when we get up to here to these available orders, we start looking at MM, MMG SMGs and ST9 pistols. And we get like $1.2 million per order at this point. Right? These guys want TNT, which is why I wanted to get our trustworthiness up. And I think it's up enough to get that license now after those sales. So let's take a look. And indeed it is. Let's get the research for explosives licenses. Okay. Uh, that's what I wanted to experiment with too. Uh, so we're gonna do ex we're gonna do explosives probably in the next video because this one I want to expand this because we're making bullets faster now. I sh I should see this this number going up, and I want to see them producing them way faster. Weekly report is in. Running cost is nine thousand. Production value is fourteen. I think that's the other factory, right? It can't be this one. Is that this one? I feel like we're making a lot more than that. Okay, 14,000 seems very small. Uh, look at this. We're almost at our peak of our power, which is good. We're using near the peak of our gas and our water. The water is going to need to be expanded, though. I'm running out of utility room for power, too. Uh, let's fix that real quick. I can expand power this way because I'm going to need to do that to finalize my big bullet production push. So let's go like that and I can't fit it in there. We'll probably have to put some more on this edge because this stuff is expensive for power. Speaking of which, let's do that now. How about we take uh, initial guns? Nope, 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 nope. Global? Bullet closer. Here we go. So the bullet closer, I'm going to put this right up against here. Leaves a little bit of space. I may have to put utilities here, so let's let's see if we can get away with putting it over here. So, like, right about... Let's say here. I don't want to block repairs here, right? So, I think we're good there. Safe there. Now, each one of these templates... I made this mistake before. Each one of these templates is... It's, it's all for the same design. And that same design is 9mm. So, when we lay these machines down... I have to switch the machines before I turn it on. Otherwise, we're just going to blow through all the 9mm and not do anything else. So how about we go right about here with you? We're going a little bit further away just because we don't have a whole lot of room here with that heating stuff. So uh, we'll go about like this. That's two. Then we go about to, let's say, here. Should be able to walk through that, I think. That's three. And then four. And I was really hoping to be able to put this down in here. Doesn't look like it's going to let me do it. Because that's just where the power is laid in. Um, okay. We'll go in like this. This is going to be five. Right? 
We, we only need six, so as long as we can fit it in. So how about we do it this way? We can send you like this. That's five. And then one more could be this side. As soon as that maintenance guy's out of the way. There we go. And we could put it on this side, maybe over here. Then we have room for more utilities on that side. I like it. We go about like that. So that's six more sets of the closing of the closer template, right? And the chemical dispensers here are actually a little bit inefficient because chemical production outputs at four seconds and the bullets output at two. But this requires two gun cotton for a lot of these, not this one, but it requires two gun cotton for a lot of these. Um, I'm not gonna be able to check it because uh, they're all nine millimeter. Uh, where is it? Right here. One gun cotton. One gun cotton for this one. One for this one. One for this one. I could have swore that it, take, it took two. Okay, 50 caliber requires two. And this one requires two. So for the 762 and the 50 caliber. We're building up a huge supply. We're building up a huge supply anyway. I think it's because we just don't have the gun cotton to distribute. No, 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 no. It's not because of that. If it's a one-to-one -one ratio, then we're out already outputting two of these for every one of these. We need to output them at the same duration. So we need two chemical dispensers on these. And then for the 50 caliber and for the 762, you actually want a lot more chemicals disper dispensers because it takes one of these, but two of these. In order to get two of these, the machine has to wait eight seconds. But to get one of the bullets, it only has to wait two seconds. So you kind of need four chemicals dispensers to really do this at the optimal every two seconds pacing. So ultimately, this design is not efficient, but I've been using it because it's easy now. It takes up less space. But what I could do is maybe get it more efficient over here since we have a little bit of extra space and this is the last thing I'm building in this uh, factory. So what I'll do is I'll put this about here, let's say. And then what I'm gonna do is move you, let's move this down a bit. Slide you over like that. Slide you over like that. Should be good. Just double check. Looks good. Okay. You are going to end up being here. Like that. Very good. Yep. And then what we got to do here with the chemicals dispensing, right? Is we need to get it to where it, we're dispensing a lot more of them. A lot more chemicals need to be dispensed. So we're going to go like this. I think I'm going to go like this too if I can do it. If it lets me get away with it. We can put a machine here. We can put another chemicals dispenser. I kind of wanted to put it there. I guess here. Uh, that means I can't fit that in there. Uh, okay. New plan. Go this way. And like this. Yep. Uh, there's places to repair on both sides here. So that's good. We just need to stick that belt where it goes. Which is going to be here. Uh, actually, it can't be there. Well, it can be if... It can, we're going we're gonna to use one of these belts right here. That puts it into the machine. And then we'll just go like that. Okay. So that's two chemical dispensers. Then we need a third. But we also need it to be repairable. So I'm going to put that here. And then we'll feed the chemicals this way. The idea is to get... Oh, we, no, because they're not going to be able to repair that. We have to go this way with it. Ah, uh, shoot. Yeah, they have to be able to get to that machine. That should be okay, though. Yeah. And then one last chemical dispenser on this side. Is there enough space to repair? I think so. Yeah. Should be. On all sides here. Yep. 
So that's this is four chemical dispensers. Now that's that's pretty expensive, okay. And probably we're gonna have to speed up our production of gun cotton now, which thankfully I've done. We are making gun cotton a lot faster now. I'm not sure how much we have in storage though. Looks like none. Um, no, 54. That's all we have spare. Ooh, probably have to have another one of these machines then. Which means we need another one of these machines. You know, we should probably just have a huge fa- mm, That's the problem. I can't have a huge factory dedicated to- Dedicated to gun cotton. I can't have a chemicals factory. Right? If I take a look at the ability to make a factory... There's a chemicals factory right here. It gives you the ability to do that. But I don't think you can output it. Because you can't really sell gun cotton, right? I don't think you can actually distribute gun cotton like that. Not like a normal product, because you can't box it. It's considered a resource used to make other things. So I'm not sure how a dedicated chemicals factory would work right now on this current build. But it would be really nice to be able to do that, because then I could have enough gun cotton going around. In this case, though... Like, in this case, I'm kind of thinking that we just have to deal with the inefficiency. Because I can't produce gun cotton fast enough, I don't think. Not unless I can do another one of these. This kind of takes up an awkward amount of space, too. There we go. Explosives license. We're ready to rock on that. This takes up kind of a weird amount of space. But what I'm thinking of, if I, if I alter this to where it's facing this way instead, right? If I was going to go this way with it instead, we'd have space to repair on both sides, and then I might be able to fit another machine right here. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Oh, you know what? Wait. Maybe I'm... Wait, maybe... Okay, hang on. I got an idea here. Let me take a look at market really quick. See, we don't have any in stock. Are my automation rules off? They're off. I moved the marketer. That's why. Uh, I moved the marketer. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life, guys? Why? Wait, I can't turn it on. Missing a market manager working at Market Station. I mean, it's because he's... It's because he's, you know... I guess... Like, what? Where, where is he? Come over here and work. You know what? Screw it. We'll hire an extra one. Market manager, we're hiring one. Get over here and start working at this bent on this on this desk. Uh that's why we're not producing enough gun cotton right now. We don't have the raw materials. Hold on, we have to see whether or not this actually works. Because I thought this worked. I thought this was great timing. And I might be wrong here, it looks like. So um Market, turn this on. And then I also want to make sure we have a good supply here really quick. So I'm gonna kind of splurge a little bit on this just because I want to test it. Uh, I'm just going to buy us this random amount here. Let's get, uh, I don't know, another 30 or so here. That's close enough-ish to being all matched up. There we go. Tw two, 20, 220 and 220. Um, cellulose S. Oh, I bought sulfuric acid. <laughs> oh, that's not what I want to buy. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I guess we'll have some sulfuric acid here now. I should probably sell it all. I'm going to sell it all. I don't need it. Let's just go like this and sell it all. Okay, so we got the raw materials. That's what we really needed. There's the two brass rolls. Okay, we just didn't have the market manager there. Got it. We can sell. Can I not sell? Oh, I, it won't let me oversell. It should let you oversell and just, like, if you put too many, it'll just send it to zero, you know? It should be like a sell all kind of thing. Okay. Now that we have the proper raw materials in place, uh, I would think anyway. No, luckily, since we weren't buying brass rolls, we weren't also having any cost from that. We have so many in the output bins anyway. So I have this, I have it basically set to buying brass rolls uh, once a minute is what I had it at. Let's switch this back to once a minute. But actually, now that we, now that we're doing once a minute. We might want to consider upping the purchase amounts on the raw materials there, since we'll most likely run out and have to have more. So I think 
We'll change this to be 300. And only when you see it under 40, let's say. And we'll do the same thing here. 300 when you see it under 40. Sounds good. The brass rolls, we only buy two of them every minute. It's We're buying them very slow. Okay. So, now that chemicals are actually being produced again, I can get a feel for how much gun cotton we're using. You have 22 left. I want to see this go up. That's what I'm, I'm hoping to see that go up. I'm starting to think... These things craft in four seconds each, and these are outputting in three seconds each. We're not making... So, chemicals are not optimized. I have not optimized chemicals. And I probably should take a second and just sort of figure it out, right? I probably should go to Sandbox and figure out chemicals and then replace all of my chemicals templates with a new, better one, if I have space for it. Which, in this area here, I probably would have space because I kind of... I'm kind of taking up a lot of space here and a lot of maintenance for, especially power, for a pretty inefficient chemical uh, just production. So we'll have to look at that. And I probably should do that before the next video. Because otherwise, setting up this, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to have enough gun cotton output to matter on this. So I probably should look at that. Hmm. Also, let's get a tool bench here because there's way more machines around here now. So I think I'm going to give them another tool bench. Maybe right here. Just kind of stick in maybe like this. I could put another one maybe like over here. Right here should be good. Like that. Yeah. So I think that's what I need to do, guys. I need to play around with chemicals now. But I'll turn these machines on anyway. So we do have some gun cotton, gun cotton in storage. And it looks like it's going up. 57. Am I going to see 60s here? Or is it just going to stay down? 57, 51. Looks like it's kind of teetering between that. Then it hits the 60. 54, 61. Okay, so it is going up a little bit. I'm pretty sure turning these machines on takes care of that surplus for sure. And then we'll get to the problem where if we don't have any in storage, and when one gets made, how does the game determine which machine gets that one? And then production just halts. So gun cotton is now, surprisingly, I think gun cotton is our bottleneck. Even though I expanded chemicals, it's because I'm expanding it in an inefficient way. Output speed is four on these. Crafting speed is six on these. So three of these and four of these. With this, it's going to add up to 18 seconds, and here it adds up to 16 seconds. So we are distributing outwards faster than these can craft, so there shouldn't be a bottleneck with this setup. There shouldn't be, because we're outputting faster than we can craft. Uh, no, actually, never mind, that's not true. That's not true. Um, reason being is that each of these count as one, actually. So we're outputting one every four seconds here. And this is taking crafting for six seconds. So I, I, I actually, all of this stuff needs to be rethought. You know what? Let's do that a little bit in our sandbox. And we can do that by the end of this video. It's not that long yet. So I think we can spend the rest of this video looking at that. Uh, looks like sales are okay. We're starting to get orders for bigger and better weapons. Probably want to look into that pretty soon. We can fill that order later. Uh, we can fill that order now. That's cool. Let's fill the one for the United States first, and then China. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to sandbox here. Let's save this. This is gonna be my YouTube 19, I, I suppose. And then, once the save is done, let's load this up in the sandbox and test out a new chemicals, uh, a new chemicals platform here, a new chemicals uh, build. So, we're gonna take the global chemistry set. And this is what we have right now. And we want to go ahead and see how we can improve this. Uh, this is inefficient. So it's all about, again, when I made this, right, I wasn't necessarily considering the outputs of dispensers versus the crafting speed of the other things. And uh, 
I mean, obviously you should in factory games, but I wasn't at the time. I was like, let's put this down and see how things work. Now I've had a chance to experience how things work. Let's make it a little bit better. And chemicals have been something I've kind of been ignoring. Mostly because it's really straightforward and it's um, kind of boring, <laughs> honestly. Uh, making guns is, sounds way more interesting to me than put two things together to make a different chemical. Okay, let's put this with a little bit of space. So, each one of these requires one of each of these. So, the three here, I think that's fine. But we need more chemicals. So, let's put these off to the side. First off, we need to figure out how many we need. So, with crafting speed being six, and the distribution here being four, it means that adding two more machines here will have us outputting every eight seconds. Wait, maybe this, maybe this, guys, is where, I think so. I think this, and it's not going to work with a two-way, because there's three of each resource. It's not going to work with a two-way, right? How many dispensers would we need to satisfy a three-way? Six, six, so it's 18. And this is going to be. Well, let's get these set up. So cellulose S. Cellulose S. Cellulose S. Yeah, that's, that's what needs to happen. I need another one of these for chemicals dispensers. And then with this, we have each resource is now coming out every. Be every one second. We have one resource for every one second in this. Uh, one one of one of these can output every one second. So then we just need to take and get this knocked down to that. Crafting speed is six seconds, so we would need six of these machines. Right? That's how we would divide it. So we need ooh three two three ways. Two three ways. But how do I divide this evenly into a three-way? Because they're divisible by two. We do it with this, right? Two resources going out to a three-way. And then we have six of these machines. But if we're going to do six of these machines... Uh, and that's what you got to do. The output speed is different, so you can't just do two of these for one of these, because then you end up outputting faster, right? If you want to optimize chemicals, you got to knock it down to where the crafting speed equals the output speed. And the only way to do that is to, like this here, it's four seconds. So you need four of that resource coming out every four seconds to bring it down to one second. We could try to bring it down to two seconds. Damn! I gotta think about this. Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna think about this. The video's gonna get really long if I don't just stop it for a second and think. So give me a second. Okay, guys. It took me a little bit of time, but uh, I think it's pretty rewarding when you finally figure it out. At least I think it is. Okay, so here's what we've got. I know this looks a little bit complicated. And also, you might be thinking, why do we need all the belts and all that stuff? And I'll go into that in a second. But here, I believe, is the most optimum way to create nitrocellulose S. And that's the final output for cellulose S and nitric acid S, okay? These two together equal this. Here's the dilemma, and we've already discussed it, but I'm going to reiterate it. The dilemma is the crafting speed of a mixer is six seconds. The output speed of a chemical dispenser is four seconds. So what you need is you basically just take those things and just times them together, and you get 24. So the magic sweet spot is 24. How do you get to 24? Well, we've got 12 of these machines for four of these machines. And the reason being is because two of these machines equals enough resources to create one for this, right? This needs both of these, which means two of these machines working together counts as one for the input, right? Four seconds of output you need to times it by six to get to 24 which means we need six 
groups. 12 machines total, okay? Following me here? This crafts in six seconds. So six times four machines equals 24. That's where our sweet spot is. So if we can somehow get the resources to be evenly distributed between these four machines from these 12 machines, we should have an input that matches the output. Okay? So, how to do that? Well, I've got these kind of inspired by that other, that other layout, right? And I'll, I'll remind you what the other layout was. We're gonna come over here. And we're going to go to the two resources three ways, right? It's kind of inspired by this, right? What was the goal behind this initially? The goal behind this initially was to create it to where three resources came out and went three by three, basically, right? We had three aluminum ahead of three steel or three steel ahead of three aluminum. They didn't mix and match. They didn't mesh together. That was the ultimate goal before. Such is true with this as well, because we need to have two a two-way splitter, and then that also needs to split two ways again to get into these machines, okay? In order to do that, uh, we gotta go two by two, and then we gotta go two by two again. And that means we have to be able to intricately control where each of the resources is going in at, right? We wanna make sure that these resources are grouped together. And so it took me a little bit of time to like figure out the positioning of these. There's a reason why they're split up in certain ways. And the reason why they're split up this way and spaced out this way is so that when the resources come out, they come out grouped together three by three and they mesh in with each other, right? Look at that beautiful, harmonious ballerina dance, okay? the resources stay together in groups of three. And so now the only dilemma here, the only thing I have to figure out, now that I got the machines in place, I have to figure out which resources come out of which machines, right? Because right now we've got nitric acid coming out of here first, cellulose coming out of here second. So we get nitrocellulose, then we get, um, cellulose, no, sorry, we get nitric acid, then we get cellulose, then we get nitric acid, then we get cellulose, right? Three by three. But here's the kicker. This is a two-way splitter. So it's gonna put one of the resources out one way, one of the resources out the other way, one of the resources out one way, but then a different resource goes that way. And then a different resource goes that way, and then a different resource goes this way. And what ends up happening is you're gonna have two of one of the resources going this direction and two of the other resource going this direction. So I need to cancel that out by having it be the exact same thing next time, but the opposite next time. So I need, like say, let's say item number one goes two of them this way and one of them this, uh, let's, let's do this by letters, it's easier because one and two. Uh, so item A comes through here three by three. We get two A's going that way, one A going that way. Then we have item B coming in. There's still, it's gonna end up flippy flopping again, but we're going to end up with two of B going one way and one of B going the other way, right? So the next time they come through, we're going to need the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. In other words, what I'm thinking I need, and I don't know this, but what I think I need is nitric acid followed by nitrocellulose, followed by nitrocellulose, followed by nitric acid. And that's going to be a little bit difficult because I've got basically these machines are so close together, right? So I have to figure out how to do this because it looks to me like this is one group, this is two groups. So this comes in after the two groups, right? There's two groups here and two groups there. So what we're gonna hopefully have, let's see, this right here comes in right here. This is a back group, that's one back group. This is another back group, that's two. We come through here. And so what I really need is the first group Ah, uh, that's not going to work, though, because then we have two nitrocellulose groups mixed in together. But that's that's how you have to play it. I don't know. I need to look at that, but we, I at least got this part down, and I'm at least proud of this part, okay? I'm proud of the belts going in like this and having them all together like that, all right? So if I was to test this out 
just to see how the distribution of resources goes. First thing I'd need to do is separate the belts so that they kick out like this. And we need enough space for these all to come together. So I think I need to go out one more. And then we can go like this on each side. And this is mostly just so I have enough room for the ending for these machines. Then we can go uh, probably like this. I don't think I'll have enough room like this, but I'm just going to try it out. For repairs, I mean. Yes, we will. Because they can be repaired on uh, on opposite ends. So I can mix them together like this. They get repaired here and here. And then over here, since I, since I spread this out enough, there's enough room on this side to repair this machine. So really all I have to do is go like this and like that and put this machine up against that and put this machine up against that. Now they can easily get repaired. Looks to me like I can probably go in one more belt. One more belt length. Can I afford to do that? Maybe only on one side. Yeah, I can only afford to do that on one side. And I'm not confident that that's going to let repairs happen. So we can go in on little belts instead. What if we go like this? We go like... Trying to get that belt highlighted. We go like... Get out of the way, maintenance man. Uh, like this. Got to knock that down before he gets in my way. Okay, so like that. And then... This is probably a good distance as is. It won't be... I mean, this will be okay. This is... this is For testing purposes, this is fine. Okay. So now, let's shut this machine, these machines off. I'm going to pull in another one of these workstations. And you are going to manage these for now. Just so I can see what they're doing. Okay, now all these, of course, are set to nitrocellulose. So what I want to see here is, with the current arrangement of machines, is there any machine that starts stockpiling one input over another? And if there is, is there a way I can remedy it by just sort of tweaking the values? Like, maybe this one machine here needs to be nitrocellulose. Or, or sorry, uh, cellulose S. Maybe this one machine right here should be nitric acid. And we can, I can play with that, right? Manipulate it. They don't have to come in three by three of the same resource. They just have to come in to where they're evenly distributed amongst uh, this two-way splitter, right? So essentially, two by two would be good, right? We get one, two, 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 and it just has to alternate, but it has to alternate not just here, but also here, so that these are getting even distributions too. It's a puzzle! Now you understand why my channel is all about puzzles, the puzzle theme. This is what it is. It's, it's trying to solve these little puzzles. And it's just my favorite thing in the world. I swear to God. <laughs> solving little tiny issues. I, I, I like the, the feeling of solving the issue. I sometimes don't necessarily like the process. Okay, let's turn these machines on. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn these machines on. And let's just see what happens. Looks like I'm down on utilities. Let's just pop one of these over here. Yeah, and then I want to get rid of all this stuff too. Because then I get to see what this, what chemicals is going to cost me, right? Uh, we will deal with that later because I, I will need that too. Okay, so let's run it and see what happens. And again, all the machines can be repaired. There's there's space on the, on the edges to repair every single one of these. It's just well, whether or not my workmen actually go and do it, which is another matter entirely. Okay, we're not going to quite know how these are distributed evenly yet. We're not We're not quite going to know that yet. Uh, I need to get a feel for and, and watch it. So this one looks like it's getting more cellulose S than nitric acid for sure. This one over here is getting more nitric acid than cellulose for sure. I imagine the same thing is happening on the other side. It would make sense. And yes, but another important thing is that they are getting inputs faster than they're actually producing it, right? So it looks to me like... We might be even overproducing here. Maybe my 24 idea isn't quite accurate. Okay, I've decided to make this a little bit simpler, okay? Ignore my 24, 24 math. That didn't make any sense to me. Uh, mostly, it made sense to me at the time, but remember, that's like a one-to-one -one ratio. We don't want one-to-one. -one. 
we want two to three. And the reason is because output is four seconds. Crafting speed is six seconds. Four is two thirds of six, right? So what I've done is I've simplified this into two separate instances, and I'm hoping that the three-way splitter will divide these up appropriately. Here's why I think they will, because we have two complete sources of inputs and three complete sources of outputs now. Because remember, it takes two, right? So what I'm hoping to see here, if we put these together, so two by two, right? We have two of product A, two of product B, and it, it's going to go and get distributed evenly, I believe. And here's why. Because we should come through here. We're going to see, let's say, A, A, B, B, right? So it goes A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B. And it, you see how it just like, it's, it just scoots itself down, right? It's going to scoot itself down every single time, which I believe will result in us having... Uh, equal resources, I think. What I want to do is turn these on, turn the dispensers on first, and then turn on these. Uh, sorry, pause this. That's not correct. Hang on. That's not what I want to do. Uh, am I going to see the input here? Probably am. Wipe this board if we can. I don't want to see any inputs in here, but I probably too late. Let's see. So, zero, 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 zero. Okay, this one has two nitric acid already. I'm gonna dump this, because I, I, I wanna start fresh, and I forgot that I changed the machines out, and uh, when you change the machines out, it also removes it from the station, so I have to look at that again. You have two and two, at least that's even. Uh, zero and zero, and zero and zero, okay. So, what I wanna do then, is we'll connect you to, nope, not the dispensers. Connect you to these machines and the splitters. Good. Okay, we're going to turn you on first. And that's going to also allow the machine that has two of a resource to just go ahead and make it and be done with it. So what we should see is zero, zero across the board on all these. Good. With that done, let's go ahead and turn on the rest of the dispensers. And let's see. Let's see if my hunch is right. Okay. Okay. Two thirds inputs to outputs uh, on these. So I want to say that this altering here is also altering the order of where things come out. I don't know if it'll be completely equal. I suspect two might be a little bit skewed, but we'll see. I want to see two and two here. Good. I should see one and one. Very good. And now I see two and zero, which is not great, but you did get the one there. Maybe you're going to get two. There, there you go. Okay, so sometimes they're going to alter, right? Because they're sometimes they're going to receive two in a row, but then the next time they're going to also receive the other two in a row. So it will balance itself, and that's the whole point, is to find a way to balance these. So I think this is how we should be doing chemicals. It should be two of the source of inputs for three sources of outputs. So let's go put that into practice in our normal, um, in, in our normal uh, production in our actual save. And then I also want to play around with this next time too, because this has a crafting speed of four and this has an output speed of three. So that's a three fourths ratio. So we want to match three fourths on this. We want to be able to do four of the chemicals dryers for every three complete sources of nitrocellulose, which is good because we'll also be working in threes on this side too. So we can, hopefully we can evenly divide it to where the three sources of gun cotton here can be output as three sources. I mean, honestly, this is actually quite easy because all we'd have to do is take the chemicals dryer. This actually looks like it's going to be pretty easy. All we should have to do here, let's just wipe this. I'll do this in this video. This is a very long video. I'm sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you're okay with that. <laughs> And uh, we're going to go to gun cotton here. Yep. Gun cotton there. Yep. 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 Gotcha. Okay. So let's spread these out just a little bit. Because we're going to use two-way splitters here in a second. And that two-way splitter is going to feed into two other two-way splitters. Then we want four sources of this. Now, the good part about this is it doesn't matter the timing in this case. Uh, wait. Do we really want four? 
No, we want three, right? It's three force. If we're going to do four of these, then we might as well just stack them directly to this. But we, we can't do that. We need three outputs because it's three seconds and the crafting speed is four seconds. So in order to do this evenly, we need three force. So looking at the ratios is what we're going to start doing. So I want another chemicals dispenser here. Uh, nope, it's going to have to be the other way around. So we'll butt you up against this really nice and tight. There we go. Stack you over like that. And then let's get a belt to go like this. I believe that matches up to where we need it to be. I'm trying to see. It's a little hard to see sometimes. Okay, you need to go closer. Match you up to there. Match you up to there. Uh, we could actually stick these next to each other if they're far enough apart. This would work, actually. If, if these two separate sides are far enough apart. There we go. There's not enough room to repair here, but they can still repair on the outsides. Yeah, that's as close as I can get them together. Cool. Get rid of these. And we'll do the same thing over here then. So we'll just take this and go out, out, in, in. Match them up. All right, good. And then we stick the recycle bins underneath them. And now we should see gun cotton and everything being produced like a champ with no access waste. So let's just connect all of these machines up and run it and see what happens. You're supposed to produce gun cotton. Yep, yep. And these are all at zero. So what we should see, what I'm hoping to see anyway, is this basically stays at one. And then as soon as it drops down, it, it gets made here, right? So it's a constant in, input output kind of thing. All right, let's run the machines. So dispensers, uh, these two are lined up. So we're probably gonna have a collision here. Indeed. So we're going to have to skip this just a little bit back like that and turn it back on. And now we shouldn't have any more collision problems. Okay, so this is the two thirds. Uh, no, this is the three quarters ratio, right? Same thing here. I get one for one, zero, zero. And we don't get any waste. It's just a constant production. I don't want to store more inputs than we can actually use. That's the whole idea. It looks like we're good to go here. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Okay. So there's the chemicals set up, right? We're going to we're going to redo the gun cotton with this. And then we're also going to have right cuz this is three sources. And this is three sources. So we want to have two instances of this and two instances of this. And that should be completely equal. We shouldn't have any waste. So let's try to implement this in our own uh, real factory in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you don't mind my experimentation. Uh, we'll see if we can just remove all chemical production from our existing factories and replace them with this template. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.